This is how almost every weekday started when I was at school. that I normally talk about movies and I have very little interest in television series but a recent clip watching binge on YouTube has sent me down a delightful rabbit hole. If you're not from the UK or as old as me then this show may not be familiar to you. The Big Breakfast was Channel 4's early morning weekday show and it ran for five days a week for 10 years. Hello! 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 It's me! How are you? This is Gabby and I'm Chris Hello. and this is The Big Breakfast here. Morning to the girls! And good morning to the Big Breakfast Boys. Oh. OK, that's that over and done with. Was yes. that funny? Yay. Let's see the carpet! Yes! Pass the phone card, pass the phone card, pass the phone card, pass the phone card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you boys? On that way, that way. Oh, and then again that tricky shot where you come up through the floor like a huge Vesuvius. And uh, bulls can wear what they damn well like, but the men have got to be careful. Handheld cameras, bright colours, often with crew members audible and in shot. It was an anarchic way to start the day. <laughs> really? They're not going to see any fireworks? No, no, ben, no. how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the fact your parents... How do you feel about the fact your parents don't like you? <laughs> Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, they're mean. not taking you to a firework so night. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And do you know, the lad at the end there, he's reacting correctly. <laughs> it's good. Uh, what about you, Soph? How do you feel about that? The fact your parents that's aren't going to take you? Mean. They're mean, aren't they? Mean. Mean. What are they? Mean. mean! Where are we going to send them? The steps of war! Out! Sit on the steps and look yeah, woeful. <laughs> right, you're all right, lads. I did that for in you. you get no, good go on, old you make yourselves you. comfortable on the sofa. You we have a little sofa for yourselves. There we go. You go and sit on the sofa. You enjoy yourselves. There we go. The original lineup of hosts was Chris Evans and Gabby Rosling taking the bulk of the presenting, with Mark Lamar doing the on-location reporting whilst acting too cool for school, and Paula Yates shamelessly flirting through celebrity interviews. At this time, Yates was probably the most famous, having presented the flagship music programme, The Tube. Roslyn had presented the kids' TV show, Motormouth, and Evans had presented the largely forgotten TV show, TV Mayhem. Oh no, oh, no. we can feel some more mayhem coming on. A TV Mayhem on your TV station. A TV Mayhem is really brilliant. If you watch us early in the, early in the, early in the morning, there's the last line, because nothing rises right, brilliant. Wow. Apart from resilient. resilient. For two hours every morning, there would be quizzes, celebrity guests, and more than its fair share of weirdos. Uh, Pete, can you wipe your lens, please? Um, no. Oh, Pete. Oh, yeah. Is that better? Yeah. That's Is that better? That's horrible. Well, it'll teach you to do it yourself now, won't it, before we're on? You had 15 minutes to wipe that lens. Hey, now, yes, look, uh, this week's family, the Pride family, they've only been here like uh, an hour and 30 minutes and we've already discovered the fact that they are nutters. <laughs> Why did you do all this, please? Oh, we enjoy it. Now, I'm not so sure about that. I think, you know, I, but you should use the word I enjoy it there. Just, I, I enjoy it in force the rest the of kids them. look really bored. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to put up with their dad's fetish for dressing up in French clothes. At the age of 11, my favourite part of the show used to be the two alien puppets which lived in the bathroom, Zig and Zag. Met a girl, she looked cute She was a girl who played the flute Yeah, yeah Toot toot She played the flute And what a hoot Said that she could be my girl She could fill my whole wide world Yeah, yeah Toot toot She played the flute We had a hoot She was a girl that had the flute 
She was a girl that played the flute. She was a girl, she owned a flute. Which was very, very difficult to play. Very, very difficult to play. That's why I love her. I love her to this day. Oh, yes. <laughs> Apparently the double act, created by Irish puppeteers Kieran Morrison and Mick O'Hara, existed before The Big Breakfast. But this is what brought them to the attention of the UK. And when they released the single, Them Girls, Them Girls, it became the first CD I ever purchased. No one could accuse the show of being slick or polished, but what it was was a great format in which to play. The more things went wrong and the host went off script, the better. But Mark Lamar would be the first to leave the show, having found travelling around the country to be incompatible with his life as a comedian. Bathroom is the word I was looking for there. there and uh, people in this house hopefully will have a bathroom and um, Dr Julian there will be an expert on it. We'll, um, see. well let's hope so. Hello, yeah. Mark Lamar, Big Breakfast. Yeah. Well, sh can I shake your hand for quite a long time because this one's freezing and I just want to warm up. Who are you? Matthew, Matthew and Nicola, Nicola, and this is Dr. Julian. Hello, come, good morning. Boone. Got it right. Can we come in? Yeah. Can we come in? Have you got a bathroom by any chance? Yeah. yeah. I thought you might have. We did a survey of uh, houses in this area and they all have bathrooms. Yeah. Where is the bathroom? There's someone in there. Oh, good. Hello. No, stay in. No, hello. Come and come. Excuse me. Oh, if the cameraman had been a bit faster, we would have seen this naked woman. Not come, you're not well. Well, come into the bathroom. Oh, she's not happy, is she? Can we, can, can we come in? We'll have a little look around and... Yeah. Someone's rung up. No, you don't want us in? No. Oh, dear me. I'm sorry. I'm oh, that's okay. No, if you will, that's all right. I'm, well, I'm sorry we disturbed you. Okay. Get better soon. Oh, dear, this hasn't happened before. I think we should leave, no, Dr. Julian. No, that's okay. We, we didn't know. We, we didn't warn you or anything. So, you have, have a nice day sorry. and get well soon. And I do feel a little bit foolish, but there you go. It's about do a lot of interviews and people say, do you ever have any bad experiences? Do you ever chuck you out? And I was going, oh no, oh, they're always happy to see us, always happy to see us. But in fact, not today. And I don't think we'll have time to go into another house. So that's what we've chucked out. We've been chucked out. For, I don't know who this man is. We've just been chucked out. Oh dear. Mark, right, it's more than in 20 minutes time. He'll have a story or two to tell about that one. During that first wave of success, the host, Chris Evans, was given an opportunity to develop a show for late night television which captured some of that big breakfast energy. That show was Don't Forget Your Toothbrush. And let's kick things off now with things that we know that you like. <laughs> Because of his involvement in this show, Evans reduced his hosting duties on Big Breakfast to three days a week, with former Neighbours actor and stand-up comedian Mark Little filling in. You are out of your tiny mind. He actually proved to be a pretty good stand-in for Evans. He and Gabby Roslin had good chemistry and he embraced the chaos. Uh, hi, big boy bloater. Hi. How are you? Because I've got a piano Hello. here and I wouldn't want a bit of a dabble because I'm actually got a little... piano? Yeah, well, just a little bit. Little, is this for real? Yeah, just a little tiny bit, and I just thought I wouldn't mind um, having a bit of a tinkle. Would that be all right? Is, is, is yeah, okay have a bit of a go? Yeah. He's Fantastic, like, okay. You ready? You don't, don't, don't have to play along. I'll just play a bit of a... Bit of, uh, is this for real? Yeah, you ready? Uh, one, two, uh, one, two, three. <laughs> When I was 16, I begged my mother to take me and my friend to see him on his stand-up comedy tour, Psycho Bubble. She relented and ended up admitting what an incredibly funny night it was. Yeah. Anyway, I just like to say something before I go. Yeah, what? Because it is, it is the last time. Oh, Ronnie, shut up. <laughs> because I've got something to tell you all. What? I've changed my mind. What? I, I'm going to stay. Yeah. Oh! I, have, oh, I'm gonna, oh, I really, I really oh, want to great. stay. That's great, but Chris, um, you can't. Why? Uh, because I... In fact, we well, know because Paul Ross has signed and he, he starts a week on Monday. No, but it's all right. You, 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 I'll come back. I'll come back no, then. You can't. Do that. Paul Ross is coming. That's what, it. what are you saying? You've got to go. I've got to go. You've got to go. Bye, Chris. Oh. Bye. See you, mate. Hey, Paul. Sorry, Chris. Chris, here you go. Sorry, mate. Come on, Chris. 
Like what are these? That's your clothes, Chris. <laughs> 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 All right. They really are my clothes as well. See you later then. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. See, bye. You. See you, Chris. See you, Toby. Miss you, Chris. See you later. See you. Chris Evans left the show shortly after its second birthday in order to focus on other projects. His three days a week were taken over by Jonathan Ross's less funny brother, Paul. It never really clicked. So Paul took over the Down Your Doorstep role originated by Mark Lamar and Mark Little became the full-time host. Cheers, Candy. <laughs> Let's try and get myself comfy. Did I me up and they said, have you got a Princess Leia outfit? That's Not a, on me, but a, I always thought this looked sort of like That's a bit Vader. Sort of, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Ah! It's very Mary Magdalene. Yeah, or uh, French Lieutenant's Yeah, so he's yeah. sort of dramatic. I this is supposed so. to be Princess Leia. Your outfit there? Well, she was in the S&M markets, I think. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> she was when she killed uh, the big slug. Oh, that was the oh, big S&M up. sequence. Yeah. Jabba. That's right, I forget everybody's name. What was it called, that thing? Jabba. Jabba the Hutt. We're not on, are we? Yeah. Are we? Oh, I thought we were just chatting here. I didn't know. <laughs> just well, I didn't swear, isn't this? <laughs> oh, awful, sorry. Oh, I didn't know, viewers. We're just having a casual chat here. Okay. Paula Yates was the next to leave the show, being replaced by Paul O'Grady, who conducted the interviews under the cover of his character, Lily Savage, who seemed to fit in with the others rather nicely. Thank you very much, Pete. And yes, in fact, it is Gabby Rosen's last day on the Big Breakfast after three and a half years of uh, undaunted effort. And it's not indulgent, Gab, to say, you know, this has been fantastic. We're going to show you your best bits now. Um, well, no, not your best bits, because it's not possible. Best, We've three, only got... best three and a half years of my life. Oh. Well, let's see a little capsule of that now. Gabby Roslin, the last of the original hosts, left in 1996 and has gone on to fairly serious presenting jobs since. This is when things became somewhat rocky for the show, as she was replaced by Zoe Ball. Zoe and Mark were never a strong double act. In fact, Zoe Ball, though not a newcomer to presenting, didn't really have the experience or confidence the show needed. Mark left the show with press reporting that he and Zoe had fallen out. <laughs> So they brought on Keith Chegwin as a regular host. He had guest hosted and done the Down Your Doorstep segments before, but in my opinion, bringing him on as a permanent host was a big mistake. Now, I know it's not nice to speak ill of the dead, so let me just say I was very pleased when Cheggers proved he doesn't take himself too seriously late in his career. The appearances he made on Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant shows were hilarious, the final episode of Life's Too Short possibly being the funniest hour of television I have ever seen. But at the time, 1996, Chegwin was the embodiment of everything naff. The show hemorrhaged viewing figures and they decided to take it off the air. Excuse me. What are you going to knock one out now? Yeah, I once got that idea in my head. I can't get rid of it. The show was off the air for a few weeks while they renovated the house at a cost of £2 million. They also picked two new hosts, the Olympic gold medal winning swimmer Sharon Davies and former host of kids TV show Crazy Cottage Rick Adams. Was this to be the new dream team which would win the viewers back? Yeah! Welcome to the big breakfast. It's Monday the 2nd of September and I'm Rick Adams. And would you believe it? I'm Sharon Davies. And before we get on with this, We'll just get this chewing gum out and stick that there. There we go, Steve, you can hold on to that. Um, and in fact, we're doing a live nice TV show here, so um, it certainly feels like Chief Inspector Dreyfus from like, the Pink Panther. So that's why I look like this. It's very electric. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. So um, let's take a look at our house. Of course, um, we've got a brand new Big Breakfast house. And very, we? very nice it is too. Now, the Big Breakfast house used to look like this. Uh, mm. But uh, now, later on, of course, a week later, it, uh, it looks a bit like this. And um, <laughs> this is what it looked like last week. Well, actually, last week. Well, actually, about five minutes ago, in fact, <laughs> yeah. really. And uh, there it is. Um, so now, they said it wouldn't be finished. They were foolish. They were stupid, because it has been finished. And let's take a look at the Big Breakfast brand new house. Here it is. Everyone has worked incredibly hard. Please don't try on a balcony like that. So there we are. It's just looking wonderful. Let's have a I know the quality of that footage does it no favours, but anything that distracts you from the awkward, stilted atmosphere is a bonus. The show no longer had that madhouse feeling. It felt scripted and static. Even that moment where Rick puts his gum on the camera feels forced. The only real plus the 1996 revamp had going for it was Denise Van Alten. Originally brought on as a weather presenter, her cheeky charm soon saw her promoted to the phone room presenter and guest host. 
I there used to be in my school band. Did you? I used to play my coconuts when we sang Little Donkey. <laughs> I used to play lead electric triangle and I also used to play in the horn <laughs> section as well. Recorder. I used to play my triangle too. But now stand by because <laughs> The only holdover from the previous version of Big Breakfast was Vanessa Feltz, who had taken over the On The Bed interviewer position in 1996. Next up, we're going to see you in a film with, with, with John Travolta. Yeah. Called Michael. Yeah. How's he looking? Great. He, I think he did a wonderful job in this movie. I just saw it the other day. It's yeah. really good. I actually was once on a TV show with Vanessa Feltz, a programme called Genius, which was, was presented by Dave Gorman on BBC Two. Um, the idea of the show was that you came up with a, a, a normally quite silly premise for an idea and then they judge if it's genius or not. I'll go for Scott at the back. My idea is uh, attractiveness standards. Everyone gets rated on their attractiveness from one to nine and then you can only enter a relationship when the combined number is equal to ten. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's fair on the ones. Ones are having a great time. <laughs> the fives have got nothing to shoot for. No. Uh, the nines yeah. are in trouble. Yeah. Uh, so Dave Gorman asked me to rate the panel. Uh, I rated the host and Richard Herring. And then it got to Vanessa Feltz. And I paused. And there was an audience laughter. And I said, well, the good thing is you'll have a really attractive boyfriend. Um, and she acted really offended. And there was a massive laugh. This section was, of course, edited out before broadcast. It was cheeky and they were right to edit it out. But Vanessa Feltz took it well. She's got a good sense of humour, if nothing else. Before I go, can I just do this? Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Sharon left the show in 1997 and Denise became the permanent co-host. But when Rick took a two-week holiday and Johnny Vaughan filled in, something suddenly clicked. Thank you very much indeed, Simon. Thank you, now, Simon. Of course, Denise got a competition winner. Who's won the competition today, Denise? And um, what have they won first of all? They've won a games console, yeah, computer go on, go on, equipment, win it, win it. ergonomic chair. Yeah. Uh, Mr. P. Nurse of Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I got you on it. Right, okay. Yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> 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 Rick was soon relegated to the down your doorstep sections of the show and Johnny became the main host, creating what most people consider, myself included, to be a golden era of the Big Breakfast. Now it is time to play Santa's stockings. Some of them have presents in, some of them are shocking. Yes, indeed, Santa Stockings, the game, shockings. the game where you can win all your Christmas presents in one fell swoop. 21, 21 stockings. stockings. Four of them are shocking stockings. 17 <sighs> contain possible prizes. Each of our three callers will be asked to pick a stocking. If they hear this noise, they've got a prize. If they hear this noise, <laughs> that is a shocking stocking. You are out of the game. At the end of the game, the caller's got the most stockings without being knocked out, then has the chance to gamble. They can either press their buttons at home, in which case they'll hear this noise, or they can keep the prizes they've already had, in which case they'll hear this noise. If at the end of it none of them have won, we carry on with the tie break. I hope that's absolutely clear. OK. Sort of. It sounds simple, it's not but there really could be a clear. lot of stake as we play Shocking Stocking. Yay! I'm confused. Let's meet the course. First caller is Joanne from Cardiff. Hello. Morning, Joanne. Hello, Joanne. Good morning. Oh, you sound in the Christmas spirit of things. I you know. really do. You're really chirpy. Chirpy. We love that, don't we, Dan? Hi, Joanne, how are you? I'm yeah, fine, thank fine. you. Yeah, you? great. Yeah, I'm good too. Yeah, yeah, not bad. <laughs> looking forward to Christmas, Joanne? Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, yeah. Is anyone else here looking forward to Christmas? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you done any Christmas shopping yet, Joanne? Yeah, all yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. Just some of it, or just a bit. Would you like to do I'm all your Christmas? I'm not interested. Would you like to win lots of prizes? Yes, I yeah, would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we crack on and play the game or should we not sort of, you know, just... Yeah, let's do it. No, I'll tell you what, let's, let's just do it anyway, yeah? Do you fancy yeah, that, Joanne? Should we just do it anyway, Joanne, yeah, even please. though there's no real point, yeah. is there? Yeah. Right. All right, go on then. They had tremendous chemistry and together they delighted in the mayhem of the show. Just to have two hours just to prat about and do what you like and just annoy producers was just, oh, it was just fantastic. For me, it was, it was, just, a, it was just the best, best gig ever. The Big Breakfast probably was the most fantastic experience for me. Um, hated the early mornings, um, but I loved doing the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
<laughs> Quite good, is it? It's a, it's How a, does that work? I don't know, Dad. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dad. It really, gr it it really growls down there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Anyway, uh, this is invented by... <laughs> when I first auditioned for The Big Breakfast, I auditioned as the weather girl. And I was just so desperate to work on the show because I'd heard that it was great. I'd never even watched the show before. And my main reason for wanting to get the job, and this is the truth, is that I'd met this guy and I was trying to get him to go out with me. <laughs> and I thought, if I get the job on the big breakfast, he'll definitely be putty in my hands. First of all, we have Richard here. How are you, Richard? Good morning, just fine, thank you nice very much. Nice to meet you. Thank oh, you, too. you oh, dirty devil. <laughs> <laughs> we had no rehearsals, nothing. We gave up rehearsals. We even gave up talking about items. It became, no, 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 it's cheating. It's cheating. And we had show chicken whereby it was, it, it was Denise and I seeing if you could actually sit in your chair on the actual five count going into the show. Where have you been, Denise? I went to the toilet. Did you? <laughs> Mid-show? I could hear you in the toilet. Did you? Doing the show. You think, wait a second, I remember being on that bit. So sorry. Johnny is so, so funny, I can't tell you. And he's exactly the same off-camera as he's on-camera. Working with Denise, it was, it's always good from the word go. Because she's just... Denise has, has a, a knack which I don't have, for she just knows when something will really run. What's so in your I pink sack, Dan? Look, have a look. Hang on a minute. She's getting something, <laughs> she's getting something <laughs> pink and fluffy <laughs> from her pink sack. Oh! Yeah! 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 Hang on down there a little bit. Charlie Dimmock. Yeah! Yeah! Everybody suspected that we had a little bit of a thing going on. But do you know what it is? I think the reason why we could take it that far and flirt so much on TV was because we're both in very secure relationships. And the latest High Street fantastic. Fashion. <laughs> I think you're fantastic. I think you're actually too. fantastic. Uh, high Street Fashion with stylist to the stars, <laughs> Ashley Rossiter. But you are. But in the meantime, this is Channel 4. <laughs> and what are they watching, Johnny? Oh, uh, they're just watching you, Dan. They're just watching you. They're love. just watching you. The thing about it was, you saw it all. That was it. It was on, just on screen. We didn't see each other, at, you know, outside work, because that's it. And it was under Johnny and Denise's watch that they implemented the Friday song, Wakey, 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 Rise and Shine, whose lyrics would change to reflect that week's events. It's got a quick second line there. Right. Oh, okay, Kate Winslet's secret wedding, wedding hit the news. The plan to marry in the summer was a ruse. Though the honeymoon's a mystery, going on a recent history, it's a safe bet that it was involved in Bruce. Oh, yeah! Wakey, 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 Watching these clips of the show has made me incredibly nostalgic, happy and sad all at the same time, in a way that I can only really compare to watching reruns of Friends, because these people were your friends, and for two years they were on fire every single morning. When they released the charity single covering Kylie Minogue and Jason Donovan's Especially For You, For Children In Need, I went and bought a copy. Not because I liked the song, because I 
really didn't. But because I liked Johnny and Denise, and I wanted to see them at number one. They ended up getting to number three. OK, do you know what? It's actually getting very close to the time when Denise bids us farewell. Oh. Oh. Last ever but show. don't be sad, I will be back. Yeah. Okay. Like all good things, this had to come to an end. It's especially for you. Well, Denise has been bad out tonight about. As our weather girl, she flew without a doubt. She examined all the stars from toe to head. All the stars that she met then, they were turned from boys to men. And she left me hot no space, just simply red. Sing it, wakey, 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 rise and shine. Giving breakfast is the only way to die. It's your number one big brekkie, so get it down your necky. And stick with us from seven until nine. She's been on the front of every magazine She even nicked her ashtray from the Queen She's a basil dirty mess And she dresses to impress At this rate you'll never get her off the screen All together! Sing it, wakey, 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 rise and shine You put so much trust in a person, and I've had it in the past, in the 90s. I mean, I know I can talk about it because it's been public. I had a big fallout with Johnny Vaughan, who I did the big breakfast with. And at that particular time, we were literally like brother and sister. I mean, we were best friends. Unbreakable. We all loved you as well. I know. I, some, yeah. I know. And it just... The whole relationship fell apart when we started to renegotiate our contracts because I always felt that we worked together as a team and that's how it should be. We created it together and not just us, but the rest of the team working on the show. I always had that mentality that it's about all of us. And Johnny, and I know there are other influences involved and, you know, agents and everything, but he was negotiating separately from me his contract, which I found out, obviously confronted him. And I realised then at that point we'd already kind of, our friendship had gone in two different yeah. directions and for me it was tarnished and I just that's why I left the show because I just knew at that point it would never be the same in that working environment. Mm. This is where my mind gets a little hazy regarding the chronology of events as I remember American actor Jenny McCarthy filling in for at least a week. Jenny, you know what? No, Johnny, you tell me. I reckon this must be just about the greatest country in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Although I must say, Iraq's a pretty great nation too. Oh. Well, they sure great on me. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, Jenny, if you were a sheep, I'd worry you any time. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, little old dog. <laughs> hey, what about those whoopers, huh? Wouldn't you like to shake them by the hand? I'll shake them anywhere you like, baby. <laughs> I can't find the information written anywhere to whether that was before or after Kelly Brook's tenure. There had been an internet campaign to get Lisa Tarbuck instated as Johnny's permanent co-host. But those duties were given to Brooke, who was a model at the time and has since gone on to do several acting roles. She lasted six months in the role before being replaced by Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> On a roll of aluminium foil I bought recently, it says you should follow the oven, the oven manufacturer's advice if you're going to use it in a microwave. I didn't know you could put tin foil or cutter in a microwave, apparently. Uh, have I missed something? I thought that using anything metal in a microwave was absolutely forbid uh, forbidden. Uh, that's the for question. Biggins. Oh, for Biggins. <laughs> for Biggins. <laughs> that's strictly for, for Christopher Biggins. It's a kinky thing. He does it. It's part of his lifestyle. Don't bother. <laughs> Uh, he can stick whatever he wants in the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> as, long as, as long as the crowd's at a safe distance. Uh, 
What Biggins does with his microwave? <laughs> no, it's nothing to do with Biggins. I merely mispronounced a word, Lisa. <laughs> I believe they were old friends before being paired on TV, so chemistry was never going to be a problem. And that year they hosted a special edition of the show, what was to be the biggest big breakfast ever, to welcome in the millennium. You just slope back from a party, happy new year. Gang, do you want to greet the same year? I'm Johnny Vaughan, this is of course... Lisa Tarbuck. We're, we're hoping to guide them through the chaos. Oh. This show was supposed to run for eight and a half hours. It actually overran by almost ten minutes. I remember being at a particularly awful party whilst they're doing the countdown to the year 2000. My friend was arguing with her boyfriend and several people were blackout drunk. And I, having no one to talk to, went into the living room and flicked on this show. Pretty soon, the whole party was watching with me. And even now... 23 years on, this interview, done midway through the show, where Johnny Vaughan talked openly about his time in prison, sticks in my mind. I really like you. So you said there's no subject area that was off limits, and we've had yeah. a huge response from the viewers. Are you still happy to answer anything? Absolutely. Well, yeah, within reason, not sort of, you know, dreary stuff. If it's no, I won't. Chipper. Legally, I have to ask you that. OK, nice one. <laughs> OK, I'm going to start, quite largely, with prison. Ah, the big ass. Prison. Oh. Uh, well, the hottest topic was prison, of course, so we're going for it. So... Was it the hottest topic on the net when they asked? Uh, well, I think it probably was, wasn't uh, it, really? Uh... Because it's intriguing, because the majority of people haven't been to prison. Yeah. So, did you think you deserved it? Uh, not, well, it's hard to say. It's hard to say whether you deserve anything or not. You know, it, at the time, you know, when you get in the trial, and that's the trouble when people go on trial, they start thinking of, rather than thinking whether they're innocent or guilty or deserve it or not, all you're thinking about really is getting off. Yeah. Uh, so you can become very self-righteous and sort of think, gosh, it's ridiculous. At the end of the day, you know, it, 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 however, my, however cajoled or pressured I was into what I was involved with, uh, have my, and peer pressure is a you know a hard thing when everyone's. Um, you, I probably did, I was weak. It was a moment of weakness, and there definitely was a time when I had the time to say no and walk away. If I'd been but a the peer it, group thing, you were going to look small yeah, in front of the lads. It's a terrible lads. thing. It's a terrible thing. Once about, you don't become responsible for your own actions because the situation sweeps you up, yeah. and you don't even stop to analyse. You don't realise. And this is interesting when you actually go to jail. You don't realise. You just meet loads of people there who are in generally just particularly a lot of the violent offenders for a tiny moment that just a tiny lapse of judgment that then affects the rest of their lives and that's what jail's really full of as well as people who got caught uh, sorry a lot, lot of people could have been in jail i mean the crime as they saw there is getting yeah. caught but just how many people you meet there it's just one moment and they tell you their story and you can see this moment of weakness when they did something terrible, when they weren't thinking about it. And that's kind of what everyone... But were the there people is. all right in there? They were nice to you? Yeah, they were. I mean, I, I tell you what, it teaches you actually kind of two things, really, about human nature when you're in jail. First thing is, this is what it taught me, apart from teaching me things about myself. Yeah. Because uh, you've got no props, no friends, all those things you kind of... Not high behind, but you can, yeah. they make you what you are in the outside world. Uh, and I think the things I learnt there was, firstly, that people who've done absolutely horrendous things can also be, be really charming people. And it's odd that those sort of two instincts or those two traits can reside in the same human side by side. You can have someone who's just done something awful and violent or a, a, a terrible gangster who's done something. And yet they can sit down and you wouldn't even know it. You have to have a real laugh with them. So that's the first thing. Teaching you that in all humans, just because someone has been a monster, doesn't mean they're a monster 24 hours a day. They walk around being a monster. They did a monstrous act. I don't say this as defence, I just say this as what I found. Yeah. And the other thing is, is when you start, is that actually... Uh, and it, it'll sound a really strange thing, uh, but, but I thought that a lot of the people in jail... Uh, it, it was, Britain has a big jail population, of, you know, for its mm. proportion of people that are there. And it shows you at least a lot of people there were in there, particularly sort of, I don't know, some thieves or whatever. I've got to be quite careful what I say here, obviously. Mm. Uh, they'll be watching, obviously. Yeah, because they might Actually, be... will they? I don't know. Do they have tellies there? Don't they? I don't know, well, they didn't in my day. But I gather they do now, you know, <laughs> a bit softer now, yeah. Uh, but that, um, it sort of shows you that people aren't prepared to be sheep, a lot of them. And a lot of them, you know, you, you know there's a lot, you know, like on the paper review, we go through those crimes that are, you know, part of you sort of says, that is genius, that kind of, to think, this, to outthink the system like that, even though it's major fraud. Uh, so some people there, you've got to admire their guile and their sort of ability not to be sheep. Uh, and just, um, I, mean, I think, what is more sinister? A society where no one breaks the law at all and everyone obeys or a society with, you know, a criminal Step element. And I think, actually, mm. a, a society where there's not a criminal 
it's slightly more sinister. It's kind of Disneyland sinister, which is, you know... Yeah, so what's going on behind the yeah. scenes? The other thing, of course, is that all victims are not necessarily good people. Uh, and you discover that in jail, which is a very tidy kind of microcosm of the world. And you discover that, you know, a lot of the people who've been in for bashing someone up, whatever, that was, it wasn't a pretty nice person they bashed up. Doesn't make the, cr and, you know, doesn't make the, the crime, crime less, good however. or less. But it sort of teaches you that. And it's the same on the world scale when you see sort of the UN steaming in to help people who are victims. And yet, when it's turned around, those same people who we kind of bail out are just as cruel and just as dreadful. So those are sort of the two main things, that amazingly differing traits can reside in the same human and that all victims aren't necessarily good people, which we automatically presume. OK, so, then. And um, moving on quite swiftly, you spent a couple of Christmases there, didn't you? Yeah, I was very unlucky, actually, because I was, I was, sentenced, I was sentenced on December the 2nd, 1988, and I came out on January the 30th, just offhand, yeah. 1991. Uh, so I actually spent three Christmases and New Year's in jail. Was it a dreadful time? I, I mean, so, so depressing. I, I actually had the, the lowest point of my life was when I was transferred suddenly out of Leicester Prison and I was taken just out of my job and I was just, well, it was a nice number in the kitchen, lovely, £5.65 a week, lovely. And I was just taken to Lincoln Prison, which is, I've got to tell you, he's, he's, Horrible. he's a really bad one. And uh, no one knew where I was. I was on a bus with this, there was two of us on a bus with 14 prison officers. And he was a mad Scotsman. And he was just up there, manacled both sides, going, come on, Vonnie, are you with me? And I'm like, well, not quite, mate. Yeah, we're not, no, quite, I'm uh, not. Yeah, we're not sort of that good friends. And we arrived at this jail, and it was just like, two days before Christmas. And none of my family knew where I was, none of my mail was going to get to me. I was just in this cell, this, this cell with this bloke who um, was actually a very nice chap, but he did have a un nasty habit of taking his false teeth out to suck pies. No. And he then used to put his, his teeth on the bed. And he used to just suck pies. Which, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Anyway, and I cleaned my shirt. I washed my shirt because I was expecting a visit some stage. I wanted to have a clean shirt. And I had this wet shirt on because they wouldn't let me go down to exercise without a shirt because that's what the dogs are trained to go for, is the stripy shirts. So you always right. have to wear them when you're walking around in circles for an hour. And uh, I was just walking around in, a, in an exercise yard. I'm not kidding, it was the size of Wales. And it was just like a real wind there. It was cold. I was just wearing Lincoln, a wet shirt. Flat I was thinking, no one knows I'm here. I didn't have parole at the time and I had another about two and a half years to go. And honestly, it was just it was such a low point. But actually, it's good to have those because only when you're in those kind of pits of despair you know how great it is to be up there again you know yeah. it's 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 only that that you know you can get any kind of greatness from i think thank you for that i'm going to lighten it right up i'll tell you one thing though so someone some really nice thing sarcastically on one christmas day because i did also have a lot of laughs in prison mm. and one of the things that uh, the great mental editor does is take out bad memories and boredom because they're too boring to, to remember, remember yeah. you can't remember waiting for a bus so that it makes you feel bored yeah because it's too boring to remember so actually because there's so many identical days the mental editor just kind of takes out the 20 days in between two funny incidents. And you're left actually looking back thinking, yeah, I had a few laughs there. And I remember one time, uh, Christmas Day, I put a sock on my cell door. <laughs> sarcastically, like a stocking for Santa. Yeah. And, uh, and I put it on the cell door. And in the morning, when we opened up, I saw my sock there, I went inside it. And a prison officer had been doing night duty had put a cigarette in it. So it was quite a sort of, at the time, it was like, wow. That's really nice. Yeah, it was a really sort of weird Hats thing, but I sort you, of thought, you are. there is a Santa, you know, Aww. it was a nice sort of thing. Lisa would leave the show to focus on her acting career later the same year, leaving space for Denise Van Outen to return. Hey, hello there, good morning. Hi, oh, peel off, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome back to your big breakfast. For a while there, it was like old times again. But alas, it was to only be for the last four months of Johnny's contract, and they would leave the show together. Scene. And you even stole some tissues from the Queen. <laughs> Ooh, we'd like you then to know that we've loved you on the oh, show. And the way you always try to keep it clean. Oh.
our final show. And now it's here where we, we just don't want to go. Oh, it's, it's all gone by so fast and so don't help it last. We'll We're sing this nice long song. To me, this is when the show ended. Only, it didn't end here. It took a little time off, and then came back with a whole new cast. It's Monday the 22nd of January 2001 and we are your never before seen, totally original, brand spanking new Big Breakfast presenter. The never before seen, totally original, brand spanking new Big Breakfast house. Oh. However, we've got the same as ever it was, desperately need the work, fantastic Big Breakfast crew. This lineup would change several times, but before the end of the year, the show would be cancelled. Why, why take it off? Why? You've got talented cameramen, you've got, you've got a production team who, putting a production team together like that takes years, and it's together now, you know, and they should keep it together because it's mad to disband. It's like saying to Man United, right, we're going we're gonna to sell you all off to different clubs and we're not going to have Man United anymore. Why? What's the point? There's no point. You've got a brand like that that's so strong and so well known. It just seems a shame, just, you know, in the beginning we had nothing to lose so we were fearless and now you've been told you, you're going to get axed so you've got no, so you're fearless and so the, you've got the freedom again which is why you're doing really well and if it's about capturing and keeping that freedom but anyway listen thanks everyone thanks everyone for for, for watching and thanks to all the crew for making it uh, my favorite job thanks guys i had the best time ever but if you are thinking of complaining don't phone because it was just for fun I know writers of soap operas who talk about the difficulty of avoiding a slump after a prolonged high period in any ongoing story. This could very well have been a little dip, but I know I had tuned out by this point. It was replaced by a show called Rise, which changed its presenters and its format more often than most people change their pants. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Rise. We are coming to you from a fancy, high-tech studio in fashionable Hounslow. There are no puppets, dancing girls or whooping crew members. There's a man hyperactive ventilating beside me. <laughs> but uh, here's our Rise promise. We'll give you all you need to know about everyone you care about in just 30 minutes. Well, we'll try. This would also be cancelled in 2002. Channel 4 would thereafter show sitcom repeats in the morning. But it turns out, without anybody notifying me, Channel 4 brought the show back. Right, it's the end of the summer, kids are back to school, and I cannot believe that this is the last show. Aww. Guys, <laughs> genuinely, what on earth am I going to do with me Saturday mornings? Now, I'll genuinely miss you. I'm going to miss you too, yeah. Adrian. I'm going to miss you. I am. I am going to miss her. I'm going to miss her. Setting me up, calling me Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Oh. Did you get that one? Did yeah, because... One? But I don't hold grudges, exactly. yeah? Exactly. And you're my good friend, so I thought, you know what, it's good to get a good friend a good gift, yeah? Oh. So, uh, I've got you a little gift, a little something, just a little something, yeah? Okay. You know, you've got a little change in the budget, you know what I mean? So, uh, so Dan, can, Dan uh, can you reveal what the gift oh, is? Dan, it's Dan. Dan. Yeah. The hosts are new, AJ Adudu and Mo Gilgan, but the show's pretty much the same. Only it's now broadcast on Saturday mornings which is why its return may have passed me by. I watched a couple of episodes on Channel 4's On Demand service, 4OD, and quite enjoyed it. But apparently, this show has already been cancelled. Um, we've also got um, at B Font, who says, I really can't believe that the fourth show is going to be the last big breakfast for Can now. Can we get it all, guys? Oh. Thank you. 
I hope the folks at Channel 4 may renew it. Don't cancel it or else I'll suffer in the mornings. Oh, thank you so much. Watching all these clips has been a real treat. I only wish there was an official clips channel. With over 2,000 episodes in the bank, that's a lot of content not being watched, which could be monetized. This show started when I was in primary school and saw me through college. It feels silly to say it as it was totally ephemeral, but it was a big part of my life growing up. I missed the big breakfast. <laughs>